limited expectations can sometimes get in the way of the unfolding of God's kingdom. On this 14th Sunday in Ordinary Time, let us learn to listen to God's voice and to recognize God's work in the good deeds happening around us every day. Please stand now and share a welcome with those nearby. Welcome, my dear. We will begin our celebration today singing number 596. Praise to you, O Christ our Savior, number 596.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Well, today in our gospel reading, we're still, of course, in Mark, is that we see Jesus going back to his hometown. And, and they look at him, and, you know, and he obviously has a reputation as he's going in there. Well, isn't he the carpenters, the Mary's son, his, his brothers, and these are his sisters? And they didn't look at him. They looked at him as little Jesus and not who he had become, the great prophets. And when we look at the Old Testament, oftentimes the prophets, and sometimes their messages are not always warmly recepted, received rather, um, it's, they're not welcome there. And because of that, Jesus couldn't do many miracles except for just laying on hands. And it wasn't because Jesus didn't have power. Jesus certainly did, but it was their lack of faith. How faith is so important. For the times in our lives when maybe our faith has not always been so strong, or the times that we've turned away because of our sins, let us take a moment and call to mind our sins and ask our loving God for forgiveness. Lord Jesus, you are the way. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you are the truth. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. And Lord Jesus, you are the life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. pray. O God, who in the abasement of your Son have raised up a fallen world, fill your faithful with holy joy on those you have rescued from slavery to sin. You bestow eternal gladness. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Thank you. And before we begin our first reading, we have someone who's having a health episode back here. So how about if we pray in Hail Mary, an Our Father, and a Glory Be, and then you can begin the readings. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us. Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. I've been instructed. She just fainted. She's going to be just fine. I didn't think I bored someone that much. So. so anyhow, she'll be fine. Thank you for your prayers. Go ahead. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. As the Lord spoke to me, the Spirit entered into me and set me on my feet. And I heard the one who was speaking say to me, Son of man, I'm sending you to the Israelites, rebels who rebelled against me. They and their ancestors have revolted against me to this very day. Heart of face and obstinate of heart are they to whom I am sending you. But you shall say to them, Thus says the Lord God. And whether they heed or resist, for they are a rebellious house, they should know that a prophet has been among them. The word of the Lord.
I'm reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, that I, Paul, might not become too elated because of the abundance of the revelations, a thorn in the flesh was given to me, an angel of Satan, to beat me, to keep me from being too elated. Three times I begged the Lord about this, that it might leave me, but he said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, for power is made perfect in weakness. I will rather boast most gladly of my weakness, that in order to the power of Christ may dwell within me. Therefore, I am content with my weaknesses, insults, hardships, persecutions, and constraints for the sake of Christ. For when I am weak, then I am strong. The word of the Lord. with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus departed from there and came to his native place, accompanied by his disciples. When the Sabbath came, he began to teach in the synagogue, and many who heard him were astonished. They said, where did this man get all this? What kind of wisdom, wisdom has, has been given him? What mighty deeds are wrought by his hands? Is he not the carpenter, the son of Mary, the brother of James and Joseph and Judas and Simon? And are not his sisters with us? And they took offense at him. Jesus said to them, a prophet is not without honor except in his native place and among his own kin and in his own house. So he was not able to perform any mighty deeds there apart from curing a few sick people by laying his hands on them. He was amazed at their lack of faith. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. <clears throat> well, one of my favorite lines within the readings today comes actually from our second reading from St. Paul. It's the last line that says, For when I am weak, then I am strong. What a wonderful line. For when I am weak, then I am strong. Now, you may wonder why in the world this one line is one of my favorite lines from St. Paul's writings. I mean, isn't it true that none of us like to feel weak and with very little control? And it's also true that our society certainly tells us, and especially us guys, we get this from our society, that being weak is equated with failure and lack of willpower. So it wouldn't seem like being weak at least in society's standards, would be good. And it's true. In our society, and there's nothing wrong with being strong, I'm not saying that, but, but our society is always trying to encourage people to be strong, to suck it up, to take it like a man, to quit your whining and complaining. You know the rest. We're taught that. We're taught that. <clears throat> We're constantly equating those people who are strong as successful and those people who are weak as failures. So why does St. Paul 
make that crazy statement about being, some, being weak somehow makes us strong. What Paul realizes within his own experiences is that, is that there are times when we must be weak. We must fail. We must struggle before we allow ourselves to be strong. I can certainly attest how true that is in my own life. Now, I was brought up in the same society that all of you were. I'm a little older, but it's the same, same society. I was brought up to, I was taught to be tough and self-sufficient. Those are good qualities, don't get me wrong. I was told to, to keep my cards to the vest and to seldom ask for help. And I'm not blaming anybody, that's just what I was brought up to believe. My parents taught me these life skills, and I'm extremely grateful that they, they gave me the tools to navigate a very complex, complicated society, realizing that life is not always going to be fair, and you do the best with what you are given. But in trying to be strong all the time, we can become too stoic or too stubborn, and miss the whole point of what St. Paul was telling us in this reading. There are times when things are out of our control and we need assistance to go forward. And it seems that until we crash, or as some people say, we hit rock bottom, that we refuse to open our eyes and to realize that the only way back to strength and healing is what St. Paul says, embracing our weaknesses and our vulnerabilities and our hurts. If any of you are familiar with the 12 steps used in Alcoholics Anonymous and other treatment programs, you may recall that the first step of any treatment program is addressing, for ad addressing any addiction or pain, is realizing, first of all, that we do have a problem and that alone, alone, we're powerless to conquer that problem. That's why it's the first step, is that we got a problem and I can't do it myself. Finally, when we open our eyes and realize that, no matter how painful it may be, and reach out for help, I can't do it myself. That's when we start to heal, be in honest. Believe me, the I recite, you may be familiar with the serenity prayer. I love the serenity prayer. It's nice and short, and, and uh, I recite it oftentimes when I'm just kind of like, okay, God, what do you want me to do? How do you want, I don't want to do this, and okay, I have to deal with this. And if you're not familiar with it, it goes like this. This is a serenity prayer. God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and I think this is the most important part of that part of that prayer, and the wisdom to know the difference. Asking for help, embracing our weaknesses. And isn't that why the church has, as one of our sacraments, the sacrament of reconciliation. We're broken people. The sacrament of reconciliation gives us an opportunity to admit our weakness and to receive the forgiveness and grace that God so generously offers, going from being weak to God giving us strength. Isn't that why we're here today? to celebrate the Eucharist. In the Eucharist, that's exactly the same thing, is that we are nourished and we are strengthened by taking the body and the blood of Christ, being together in our own brokenness and coming forward to God to embrace that faith, to give us nourishment and strength from weakness to strength, the strength that God gives us. And isn't that ultimately why we have faith if I had to prove everything, I think I'd, I'd have crawled up and, and gone away a long time ago. But that's why we have faith that, that no matter how we may have sinned, or no matter how we may have failed, no matter how badly we might have screwed up, and all of us, I raise my hand for that, is that God is so patient. God is just standing there, you know, going, okay, okay, you fall, you crash, come back come back, patiently waiting for us just to open our hearts and accept his healing love from weakness to strength, the strength of God. And so when we look at it that way, perhaps St. Paul isn't saying something so 
outlandish when he preaches that through our weakness we are made strong. Because we do have faith that when we allow Christ to dwell in us, especially in our weaknesses, we have no other choice but to accept his healing love and mercy, and that always, always brings us back to strength. And so, as people of faith called to embrace that faith, let us proudly proclaim our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate in the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And so, with our hearts always open to that transforming love of Christ, let us offer our prayers. For the church around the world, that we may be a sign of goodness of God in our weakness and humility, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the leaders of this country and around the globe, that they may acknowledge their own inadequacies and look to God for strength and wisdom, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For prophets among us who witness to the grace of God and speak in the Lord's name, that they may be faithful to their calling and know the value of their work, even when they encounter resistance or rebellion. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who suffer, especially from any addiction, that they may turn to God for healing and hope. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died, that they be welcomed into the loving arms of God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us add any additional intentions in the silence of our hearts. And for Jean Kismer, to whom, for whom this Mass is offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God of love and mercy and all goodness, we ask you to hear the prayers that we offer you with humbleness of heart and to answer them according to your will. We ask this in all things through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you. And if any of our young people would like to come forward and bring your gifts to the altar of God, whatever they are, come on up. Come on. Thank you. Very As we bring our gifts to the table today, please sing Thank number 595. You. God is still speaking. Thank number 595. Thank you very much. <clears throat> God is still speaking, listen.
listen and draw near. God is still speaking, see a new creation. God is still speaking, stand and do not fear. Open up your ears to hear. God is still speaking, living good news, strong and clear. Listen and draw near. Through the struggle, grief and pain, God is still speaking. God can raise us up again. Stand and do not fear. God is still speaking, blessed invitation. God is still speaking, listen and draw near. God is still speaking, see a new creation. God is still speaking, stand and do not fear. In the bleak and midnight hour, God is still speaking. Sing the word of truth to par, listen and draw near. To our fragile, wounded earth, God is still speaking. God can bring new hope to birth, stand and do not fear. God is still speaking, blessed invitation. God is still speaking, listen and draw near. Speaking, stand and do not fear. Though the nations rage and fight, God is still speaking. Hear God's voice of grace and light. Listen and draw near. Choose the way that leads to peace. God is still speaking. True compassion, sweet release. Stand and do not fear. God is still speaking. Bless and Pray, friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name. Amen. May this oblation dedicated to your name purify us, O Lord, and day by day bring our conduct closer to the life of heaven through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is, is right, right and just. just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in goodness you created man. And when he was justly condemned, in mercy you redeemed him through Christ our Lord. Through him the angels praise your majesty, dominions adore and powers tremble before you. Heaven and the virtues of heaven and the blessed seraphim worship together with exaltation. And may our voices, we pray, join with theirs in humble praise as we acclaim. Holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. 
make holy, there for these gifts we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it. He gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. As we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and to minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and the blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, with Patrick, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Saint Joseph, the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. <clears throat> through him and with him and in him, O oh God, oh Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil, Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory of yours. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Thank you. Let us offer each other a sign of Christ's peace. Peace be with you. Peace, peace, peace. Peace, peace be with you, Gretchen.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. As we are nourished at the Lord's table today, we will sing number 930, Taste and See, 930.
see that the Lord is good. In God we need put all our trust. Taste and see, taste and see. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that having been replenished by such great gifts, we may gain the prize of salvation and never cease to praise you. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you. Thanks to all who have helped out for, with our needs for a vacation Bible school. If you wish to contribute, please remember to return all donations to either location by July 15th. Excellent. I think that's it. The Lord be with you. <laughs> and may Almighty God bless you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. See Christ in others. Be Christ, Christ for Christ. others. Amen. Going forth to take up God's work, we will sing number 775. Go make a difference, number 775.
the world.